pregnant women who eat high-fat, high-sugar diets may affect future generations. New research shows multiple generations of offspring can have metabolic problems even if they consume healthy diets. A mouse study at Washington University School of Medicine is the first to indicate that even before becoming pregnant, a woman's obesity can cause genetic abnormalities to at least three generations, increasing their risk of obesity-related conditions. Crown Candy Kitchen, a St. Louis tradition since 1913, is a destination for a unique treat. From St. Louis's oldest soda fountain to the old-fashioned candy counter, it's like taking a step back in time. Only times have changed. Indulging yourself with a malt or milkshake is meant to be a treat, not a regular diet. And with the expansion of fast food, including milkshakes at every corner, too much of anything sugary and fattening has become, well, fattening. And it's everywhere in today's fast-paced eat-and-run society. Obesity is now a huge problem worldwide. In recent years, obesity rates in women have surged ahead of men, and now just over 40% of women in the U.S are obese. That's according to new government health statistics. Growing health concerns mean taking action. And for the iconic Blueberry Hill on the Loop, that means offering healthier choices. It's no secret pub food can be high in fat. So in recent years, owner Joe Edwards created options. People ultimately make their own choices but we provide a, a, a broad palette from which to choose. Edwards prides himself on serving 100% beef burgers without additives and preservatives. And he's taking healthy choices a step further, offering low-fat or fat-free menu items. The salad dressings are house-made, and one has zero, the red French, and, and then the, the cucumber yogurt, you know, maybe two grams, and they taste good. I mean, you can really mix ingredients intelligently and come up with a recipe that actually tastes good and is healthy. Also on the loop, a new approach to desserts. We do try to take into consideration all the different uh, dietary uh, restrictions that are out there. And so we do offer some sugar-free items as well as gluten-free and vegan. But getting down to science, does making better food choices mean good riddance to obesity and its health problems? OBGYN Dr. Kelly Moley had a theory that it's not that simple. Moley is the co-director of Women's Reproductive Health Research at Washington University School of Medicine. She believed a woman's obesity can predispose her children and grandchildren, multiple generations, to metabolic problems. In other words, a mother is passing along obesity and related conditions such as type 2 diabetes and heart disease. So Moley set out to prove that a mother's high fat, high sugar diet affects future generations, contributing to the obesity epidemic. The research focused on three generations of mice. If you are affecting your next three generations by what you're eating before you get pregnant and your body habitus, then you are really putting society at risk. In her lab, thin mice are given a diet similar to a poor diet for people. 60% fat and 20% sugar. That's a diet in humans that would be similar probably to a really poor fast food diet every day. I think probably most people don't eat 60% fat a day, but if you start counting the, the amount of fat you eat, it gets pretty close in most Western diets. The other big change in the 70s was that instead of using sucrose as a sweetener, we started using fructose in everything. And that, you can see almost the trends with obesity directly increasing with the consumption of fructose. We are the highest consumers of fructose in the world. Moley says approximately 66% of reproductive age women in the United States are in a broader category of being overweight or obese. Taking a scientific approach using mouse models has given Moley the answers she long suspected. This is the, the first study in mice that has really shown at least that it goes for three generations. No one else has shown that before. The research indicates that a woman's poor diet and obesity while pregnant 
and in the years before becoming pregnant, cause genetic abnormalities passed along to at least three generations. Therefore, obesity and metabolic problems can be inherited. Obesity is linked to the development of mitochondrial abnormalities in a woman's unfertilized egg and the mouse models show it's happening at a high rate. Mitochondria are referred to as the powerhouses of cells because they supply energy for metabolism and other biochemical processes. The cellular structures have their own sets of genes inherited from mothers, not fathers. So Moly explains obesity and related health problems are passed along to future generations through the female bloodline. So the mitochondria from the mom are passed on to all the offspring, regardless of sex. If you were a mother, you had bad mitochondria, your daughter and your son get it. Your son would not pass that on, but only your daughter would potentially pass that on. In order to prove that it was transgenerational, we looked at the actual oocyte that formed that embryo. And we found, we're the first to find that the effects were having uh, a much earlier impact. So the high fat diet was affecting the oocyte before it even became a fetus. And Molly says this raises more questions. We assume it's a genetic effect, but is it something that's happening in the nuclear DNA or is it something that's happening in the mitochondrial DNA? Mitochondria are very interesting organelles. They were originally bacteria um, that had been incorporated into eukaryotic cells and now they've adapted as one of our organelles even though they were originally um, considered a parasite or, a, or an additional piece of DNA. So mitochondria are the only organelles in the body that have their own DNA. And what I'm trying to, to, to investigate now is whether that is the effect that the high fat, high sugar diet is having, is that on the nuclear DNA or is it on the mitochondrial DNA? And that would be an interesting um, distinction to make potentially for therapeutic reasons. Moly says therapeutic strategies targeting mitochondria can be investigated, but medical treatments can take years to develop and approve. So Moly is also focused on what women can do now for their future children and grandchildren. But that in itself is tough to answer. First, an obese woman would need to be eating healthy and losing weight many years before becoming pregnant. Time span of the diet before actually conceiving is probably roughly five to 10 years of a poor diet. Your habits for at least five years before you get pregnant could potentially impact your offspring. Otherwise, she says, children are at risk. Once born with abnormal mitochondria, Molly says that child can grow up to eat a regular diet but research conducted in her lab shows a normal diet won't reverse the health problems. The only mice that are getting the high fat, high sugar diet are the great grandmothers and the grandmothers. Once those mice are born, we feed them a regular diet and they still develop the problems with insulin resistance and type two diabetes. So she's investigating combinations of diet and exercise. You know, we've tried uh, to do some types of studies to look at reversibility of this. They haven't been very successful. Again, we've been doing it all in the mothers, not in the actual child. So it's possible if they were able to exercise and increase their insulin sensitivity, they could avoid some of the downstream effects. And those are studies that need to be done as well. People who devote their lives to the food and beverage industry are aware. Options for those with a sweet tooth are given serious time and devotion. Desserts are desserts, and so it shouldn't be a this dessert is totally different from that dessert just because it's a little more healthy or um, has something, I don't want to say lacking, but maybe less sugar. You'd be hard pressed to taste the difference between um, our sugar-free cheesecake versus our regular cheesecake. Our sugar-free thumbprint uses a sugar-free coconut, also the agave nectar in that as well. And down the loop, Joe Edwards says, He's in the business to care. I definitely pay attention to the research. Science is real. In small ways and big ways, there are people trying to help. I think that we should probably recommend for young women to give themselves enough time to get to their ideal weight and to develop healthy eating habits. I think that's the best thing you can do. That makes perfect sense. I think that if you're conscious and very cognizant of what you're eating, you should really try to avoid fructose, high sucrose beverages, and really try to decrease your amount of fat. Um, 
I don't think that's required to get pregnant, but I think you should try to achieve that before trying to get pregnant.